I thought I was dying. Darlene Bunch of Waynesboro got an epidural steroid injection after she got little relief from back surgery for a herniated disc. But less than 24 hours after that injection, she was in the emergency room with bacterial meningitis and an air embolism in her brain. My very words, I repeated over and over again, God, please help me. God, please help me. God, please help me. She eventually recovered from both, but was left with a condition called arachnoiditis, which has left her in extreme and nearly constant pain. This was all a direct result of your injection? Absolutely. Bunch is now suing the doctor who gave her the injection. She now knows he had no formal training and instead had learned to perform this rather complicated procedure by watching a colleague a few times. Barry Weathers is her attorney. You don't spend a half an hour or half a day with a friend and become proficient to actually treat patients in a safe way with these injections, yet it's happening all over the country. And News Channel 5 investigates has found it's leaving patients like Darlene Bunch with serious, often life-changing complications that some experts say could be avoided. Yes, I'm concerned and the government is concerned. Everybody is concerned. Dr. Lakshmaya Manchikati has authored dozens of studies on epidural steroid injections and is the head of the American Society of Interventional Pain Physicians. Okay, guys, are we ready? He does more than 1,500 epidural steroid injections, or ESIs, a year and says it's a very safe and effective procedure when done right. So this is the needle. He believes these treatments are being overused in part because they're highly profitable. 60% of the time when they say a patient needs epidural, they don't. But what he's most concerned about is that some doctors administering these injections, he says, are not properly trained. Training is the most important aspect. Dr. Manchikati says doctors should be trained in three standard approaches for giving an ESI and know how to determine which one is right for a patient. Okay, I think we are there. Doctors also, he says, should know to always use contrast dyes and real-time x-rays to avoid puncturing the lining of the spinal cord. We're almost done. I'm putting the medicine in. Doctors who don't, he says, are more likely to make potentially dangerous mistakes. If you put the medication outside, it's not going to work somewhere else it is not going to work. It rather can create multiple problems. In fact, Manchikati so now wonders whether mistakes in administering the injections contributed to the fungal meningitis outbreak that has already killed dozens of people, something he's asking the CDC to investigate. And I was like, whoa, 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 you know, stop. This is not, something's not right. When Darlene Bunch but had her injection, I, the needle punctured her spinal cord lining. And court records show the doctor later admitted that he did not use dye and that he only uses one of the three injection techniques. Yet he maintains that what he did followed the accepted standard of care, something Bunch believes is unacceptable. The pain that I was having before I had surgery is absolutely nothing compared to the pain that I live with on a daily basis now. Now, there are no training requirements for doctors to give these injections, but there are now several patient groups across the country calling on the FDA to issue standards. With millions of people having these shots these days and the potential problems, they believe this procedure needs more government oversight. So what do you do if your doctor recommends that you have one of these shots? Good question. Make sure the doctor does a complete physical and takes a full medical history, but most importantly, ask lots of questions. Find out about the training they've had, if they know all three approaches, which one they plan to do on you, and above all, will they be using the live x-ray or fluoroscopy as it's called, and contrast dye, which is so important, during your procedure to monitor where exactly the needle is going. Do your research. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Jennifer. Studies show epidural steroid injection use has increased more than 150% in the last 10 years. Again, some say it's because it's so lucrative for doctors. Medicare generally pays between $200 to $600 for one of those shots. We have an update tonight to a story we